But thank God who gives us the privilege of being his own children. Although we came into this world living disastrously, but he brought Jesus to die for us, that we might have access back to him. And that privilege still remains. You are not born again, turn around today. You are born again, keep it up. Do better every day. Today we are going to read two Bible portions. First of all, we are going to read Jeremiah 22, verses 29 and 30. Jeremiah 22, verses 29 and 30. O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, write this man down as childless, a man who shall not prosper in his days, for none of his descendants shall prosper sitting on the throne of David and ruling anymore in Judah. Wonderful story. Write the man down as childless. Not that he didn't have children, not that he won't have children. They will continue to be children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, whatever, but none of them shall come to anything. That's God speaking, and he's commanding the earth to write it down. Let it be there in the annals of everything. Good shall never come out of this household. Would that be a curse? That's worse than a curse. Not a curse by the devil that can easily be shifted away, but coming from God directly. Now we are going to read Haggai chapter 2, verses 18 to 23. Haggai 2, 18 to 23. Consider now from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed still in the barn? As yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yielded fruit. But from this day I will bless you. And again the word of the Lord came to Haggai on the 24th day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of the kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. I will overthrow the chariots, and those who ride in them, the horses and their riders, shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. Verse 23. In that day, says the Lord, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtel, says the Lord, and I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. Interesting, interesting, interesting. This is a family that God had cursed and says no good shall come out of them. Zerubbabel is the direct grandson of Cornea. And God had said nothing, nobody at all that comes in the lineage of Cornea shall become anything. But the direct grandson became the governor, blessed there by God. And not only that, God says he will make him his signet ring. The signet ring was like what we call a seal today, that whatever document is produced, there is a seal on it. So God makes him the seal. Whatever God produces, if his name is not on it, is not valid. That is how God took him. But his grandfather, the father before his father, God had said nothing from his generations will ever come to anything. What did he do? He built the house of God. He said, note, from this day forward, this day that you have laid the foundations of this house, I will bless you. Verse 19 starts by saying everything is empty. There is no food. Nothing has worked. Nothing yielded. Everything had been destroyed. But because you have laid the foundation today, things have changed for you. I will bless you. What have you done that God will bless you with? What is that thing that you have done that God will say, yes, because you have done it, I am going to bless you? Check again, what have you done? that will touch the heart of God. Not what have you done because of the abundance you have. You say, check from today, there has been no seed in the barn. 
which means out of his poverty, out of his crying, that he built that temple. God saw that he built. It is not that he built a temple, but it built out of the depth of what he did. He had to, as it were, close off his life to be able to build it. And when he laid the foundation, God said, Chai, God knew his heart, he knew that he would complete it. I am not talking about you starting a thing that you won't complete, because God knows you won't complete it. I am also not talking about you who wants to do a thing to bribe God so that he can respond to you. I am talking about the person who is deliberate, who wants to do something for God, ask God. Yes, he came into a family that was caused that would become nothing, but he recognized God as God and decided to do something for God. And decided that although nobody would want to build the temple for God, he will. Although there is no seed in the barn, he will do it. Things are hard, yes, but I'll do it. And he did it. And when he did it, God said, you, no matter what happens, you have become my sickness. I will bless you. I'll shake the heavens. I'll overthrow everything and make sure that I stand you up. I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, and I'll make you like a signet ring. For I have chosen you, says the Lord. I want to tell somebody, no matter the curse that came upon your family. I know we run around looking for how to break curses and covenants. That's not what I am talking about. You don't need to break anything. God takes it away by Jesus. But what am I saying? What have you done that touches the heart of God? David was taking care of his father's sheep. But he did it in such a way that he touched the heart of God. And God said, that is a man after my heart. Taking care of his family thing. What are you doing wherever you find yourself that will touch the heart of God? That God can move away every covenant in your life, every curse in your life, every wrong thing of your life shifted away because of you and enthrone you beyond everybody else. I've not heard of another person who became the signet of God's hand, who became the seal that God must put before anything is approved. But that was the son of a curse. Your situation will change. Do something. Wake up, do something. There is nobody who does not know something to do. Don't wait until anybody tells you. If you are waiting for somebody to tell you to do something before you do another thing, who wants to give so much to the Lord, then you are not doing it for God. If it is something you want to do, you will determine on your own and do it. And God is going to change everything about your life. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.